Amazing. Really psyched to be talking about uh, Web3 education today. I'm um, myself, I, I straddle the line a lot in this role between, um, yeah, newbies entering the space, uh, the onboarding sphere, communicating out of the bubble, <laughs> and, uh, you know, translating things um, from within Web3 to, to new users. So it's also something I'm just personally passionate about. So really excited to be talking about this with you today because um yeah i think between uh yeah between bankless academy token engineering academy and urbanica we've got such an amazing representation today of projects that are delivering web3 education so um i thought you know i'd love to give you to give all of you a chance to introduce yourselves first off um talk a little bit about yeah, the the, pro the organizations that you're representing. Um, maybe Tetronome, would you like to kick it off? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Uh, great to be here. Uh, really psyched to have kind of gotten to know some of the people over at Give it, uh, Giveth. Um, Corey, I think we actually met at um, ETH Barcelona, uh, though obviously I don't have a profile picture up here, so um going to be very difficult for you to uh, put a face to the name. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, got to know Katabe uh, quite well there um, and still talk with Katabe on like a, uh, I would say, couple week basis. So um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having us. So I work at Bankless Academy. Um, I'm one of the uh, kind of core team members. Uh, I see Didier's in the audience here. He's uh, been the developer on the project. He's probably the longest standing. Um, and then I am the lead designer. Uh, so I handle a lot of, uh, I guess, product design as well as UI. Um, I handle a lot of our content, especially more and more nowadays. And um, I handle our illustration. Um, so for the lessons themselves and uh, I like art direct for anyone who comes in and does like more hand painting uh, kind of stuff. Oh, and I do some biz dev too. So anyone who works in a startup knows what it's like to wear a thousand different hats. Bankless Academy is a learning app. Um, you can check us out at uh, app.banklessacademy.com. Uh, and essentially, we provide a learning infrastructure uh, with a bankless learning journey. We have about, uh, I think, nine, maybe uh, seven to seven, eight or nine <laughs> lessons up uh, currently, anywhere from you know creating your first wallet, um, learning about how blockchains work, learning about Web3 security, how layer ones work, layer twos, how to fund your wallet, et cetera. Um, yeah, so, I mean, really to kind of understand more about what exactly we do, uh, I definitely recommend checking out our website at some point. Um, and I'm sure we'll all plug our websites a couple times throughout here. So if you missed it now, you'll hear it again later. Um, yeah, we, we basically, you, you go through... Um, uh, a learning presentation, you look at some pretty pictures and some words, you learn stuff, and then you get an on-chain badge at the end. And that's pretty much the uh, the intro for us. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, and it was, it, I, I remember, oh my gosh, sitting with all of you at ETH Barcelona out on the grass. That was like super lovely. And, um, you know, and Kotabe has spoken so highly of your program so many times, um, I think, to, to help onboard his partner and... Uh, yeah, it's a very, very easy to use and um, very easy entry point for people who want to start learning about Web3. So, um, yeah, big fan as well. Maybe we can switch over to Umberto with Urbanica, if you'd like to introduce yourself and uh, Urbanica's initiative. Hey, hey, hey. Do you hear me well? Yeah, totally. Yes. Do you hear uh, background noise or people speaking? No, okay. a tiny bit, yeah, a little yes. bit, but uh, yeah. you're you're very clear. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So, GM, <laughs> GM to everybody, Umberto here. Uh, thanks for inviting Urbanica and me. Um, well, I'm a Latino from Mexico, and my whole education experience uh, has disillusionated me, if 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 that is a word in English. Uh, and I would like to introduce that in in this um, space. Um, I'll intro two of my experiences that contextualize how teaching is disassociated with reality and those in charge of traditional education do not care about their apprentices. 
Um, so I, I think these are very important as an introduction of why Urbanica entered and why I am doing this. Um, well, and the first one is in college, I found out that the curricula that I was going through was not updated in 15 years. And the professors didn't have the vocation to inspire passion to, uh, to their apprentices, nor to update themselves as professors. So I ended up creating the first students group as specialized in international, international business in the whole university. And there we created the events, courses, and learning tours that the university was missing for us as students. And this led to finally update the curricula for the next generation. And this group is called HUV ANI, that it's a uh, Alcones UV, Alcones is Falcons of the Universidad Veracruzana, which was my university. And, um, and this uh, also led me to political activism inside the school and outside to make the changes that the people in charge was not actually doing. And another example is um, in my e-governance master degree, even if the professors were, were top world researchers and universities that are in the 100 top worldwide, the approach is 99% keyboard, uh, keyboard working and 1% uh, field visiting. And this is very important because uh, then we as students and as professors and as people in, in the academics or in the uh, learning um, ecosystem, we are within silos or within uh, bubbles and not really uh, interacting with the outside world, let's say. Uh, and so between and after these two experiences, I can say with confidence that few in the world are so caretaking and passionate as the Token Engineering Academy that we have here and the Re Regenerative Renaissance courses that I, I took. And they are really, really doing something very different and engaging with the, um, the concepts and practice, which is very important. So my deepest recognition for them. And well, this is what, I, what my experience um, has led me to do, and it's a, um, a way of saying that the traditional ed education system is not broken, but it just not works. And also, it, traditional education is boring, it's unrelated to reality, and instead of preparing uh, current re generations to make the improvement society needs, they just train slaves to maintain the system at the expenses of all living beings, and this is why Urbanica enters. Uh, by offering gamified micro-learning content that takes people from being passive learners to actually making changes in their lives and in their communities. We're still iterating the best ways to engage people into taking actions locally. But uh, as of now, we have seeded the mind of more than 400 people with, with post-capitalism, cybernetics, and solar punk uh, tw through Twitter threads as learning pills and about 2,000 people with the videos that we make. So we are still iterating, we are still experimenting, but one thing that we do is that uh, once we release something, we test it with a focus group or with different focus group to know the, 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 what, what do they think about this. And this is very important because we also see in product um, people going to their customers in the, let's say, traditional uh, company view uh, so to get real feedback and uh, schools should do the same uh, to, to get what the students are, st are feeling about their, their education. Um, well, we aim to open our full course uh, on, on, on tools and knowledge for urban peer governance by March, which is this is our focus. Um, urban governance to change or to... to let others know that they have the power and the duty to make the changes they want for living in better places, like better cities, uh, but with, the, with a different ontology of life. And well, that's, that's it about us. Thanks. Amazing. Yeah, thanks for sharing. And like, and honestly, this, this feedback loop, it's incredible how many companies and organizations actually miss this step still today, right? So 
it's not even a thing you can take for granted. And it's such an interesting point to to be doing that in education, be getting feedback continuously to iterate and improve um, from students directly. So I, I love that. And um, I'm also curious to hear more on the details of gamified education, but uh, maybe we can circle back to that in a minute. Um, thanks so much for sharing that. It was super, super cool. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you, Octopus, about uh, the Token Engineering Academy, which is a very close friend of Giveth. Um, we'd love to give you a chance to introduce yourself as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Octopus. Uh, I work at for with Token Engineering Academy as a course author, and I guide live uh, study groups. Right now, the main focus of Token Engineering Academy is the Token Engineering Fundamentals course which you can find at tokenengineering.net. The course is async, but there's a huge Discord community of probably about 20 or more study groups that are led by individual study group leaders. And we think of these as local study groups because lots of times they have a specific focus for a language or a region, or they could also be organized by a theme like uh, women in Web3 or Some other thing, uh, Back to Basics is a beginner's friendly study group. So the website and the Discord are the foundation of this educational community, but there's also a YouTube channel. And Token Engineering Academy has been active in the space since 2018. So they've done a lot of things like have in-person conferences and have large uh, virtual research groups. So it really is uh, an institution that has a lot of not only courses, but other activities that go on that you would associate with a traditional university. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, is your main your main target group is you're focusing on um, furthering the token engineering space specifically, right? Yes, uh, I would say it's not a general web three community is specifically focused on the practice of token engineering which is research related to tokens where you use tools like math and simulation and system design and mental models and you you engage with the structure of what makes a token work so there are a lot of great token engineers um, michael zargum trent mcconaughey many others who have shared their knowledge, uh, Mark Richardson, and they've contributed articles and helped to guide uh, our understanding of what token engineering is. And then we take the materials that have been developed by working token engineers and make them accessible to people so that they can start and share in that journey. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. If there's any topic that deserves its entire own academy, it's definitely token engineering. Um, yeah, great. And um I'd love to hear, you know, maybe we could go a little bit more in depth on the actual models that your projects are using um, and the materials involved. Um, you know, I think there's different there's different models available for delivering education these days, even just online, whether it's uh, through courses or workshops. Um, Umberto, you mentioned gam- gamification. Um, so maybe we could understand a little bit more in depth about how the programs are being delivered. Um, if we could circle back to you, Tetronome. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I actually worked, uh, as a game artist, um, in the games industry for a couple of years before I joined Thankless Academy. Um, and actually I, I kind of left the games industry cause I didn't really like where it was going. Um, and I found Web3 to be way more expressive. I really just kind of fell into it. So um, at Bankless Academy, you know, we have a lot of plans and already some early gamification um, implemented in, in the platform itself. Uh, so I'm interested to hear more about from uh, about how the other projects are also approaching gamification. Um yeah, so uh, Corey, just to make sure, you just want to hear a little bit more in depth about like what our formula and format is, and like how the platform works. Yeah, maybe like what people can expect. Um, you know, engaging with Bankless Academy, how, how, uh, yeah, how is the model and how are the materials set up like to to go through the program? 
Cool. cool. Yeah. So go ahead. I'll cut you off there. No, I just had a filler word at the end of my sentence. <laughs> okay. Okay. There. All right. Like groovy or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I like to say that our main product is actually a, a user journey. And then everything that we build out is in support of that, whether it's like education material or website functionality and features. Um, the, the core thing that we are offering to communities um, and to users is, is a learning journey. Um, and that learning journey is very bankless colored, right? So we definitely have a lot of, uh, you can see this from like what we focus on to the words we use or even some of the opinions we have um, about which tech is stronger, et cetera. Uh, you'll really see that in, in our user journey. Um, so if you were to go to our website, what you would see is a selection of lessons. And our user journey starts off in the, the very first place that many user journeys um, in, in Web3 start, and that's creating your wallet. So getting what we call your digital passport, where you're going to be able to have your identity. And then also you're going to be able to um, obviously keep money in it and go and kind of collect things around the Web3 uh, universe. And of course, this then goes into badges, etc, which I can touch on after. Um, so if you dive into our wallet basics lesson, for example, uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about, you know, custodial wallets, non custodial wallets, what public keys are what private keys are. Uh, but you'll very quickly notice that we actually have um, quizzes as well. So they're Right now, very simple multi-choice quizzes, but this is an element of the website we plan to evolve over time with some more interactive tasks. And as you progress through the lesson and kind of build up your knowledge, uh, you'll see we also have keywords. So you can go over some of the written content, get definitions or more explanation on certain uh, concepts. Um, our illustrations are actually something that you know we put a lot of focus into. So as a game artist, um, very focused on design language and trying to build like a, a consistent um, enough design language that can be used throughout all kinds of lessons. So that when you see a symbol, you know, let's say of, uh, of of the wallet, and you see that in another lesson, you immediately know like there's there's very little reference that has to be made to that because. Um, you have already done the wallet lesson and you know that that item is a wallet. And then you can extrapolate that to the blockchain or to uh, coins flying around or even to deeper concepts um, like roll-ups uh, or something like that. So um, very design intensive. And um, this pairs really nicely with our written content, which is quite minimal. Um, I think that a lot of us are met with like uh, text walls when trying to learn about Web3, um, considering the depth of some of the concepts. So we really try to minimize written content and kind of maximize those visual examples um, and then have these quizzes along the way to kind of cement that information. And then when you reach the end of our lesson, this is when we have a, um, a quest. So for the first one, it's installing a MetaMask wallet. So we basically say, hey, go download the MetaMask extension here. Um, install it, or you know, you can grab another uh, another wallet as well. And once you have done that, and we detect your wallet on the website, you just sign a transaction that basically proves you completed the quest. So it's a you would say an on chain proof in this case that you understand the content of the lesson because you proved that you were able to install and um, use a wallet to sign a transaction uh, for the quest. And this gets more advanced as we go on to different topics. For that, you get a badge. This is a proof of knowledge credential. We call them Academy Badges. We have lots of cool plans for evolving the gamification of these. Um, but yeah, generally you're completing, uh, you're learning, you're proving that knowledge and you're collecting credentials uh, for doing that. Um, yeah, and uh, something you'll also notice pretty quickly, um, the, the user journey, or actually it's quite subtle, the user journey extends beyond just individual lessons and um, actually extends like using the website. So when you're using our website and you're connecting your wallet, you know, we, we kind of highlight different buttons and say connect here. And as you're doing that, you're learning how to use other Web3 apps too. 
because uh, if this is the first place that people are going to go, you know, using a wallet to sign in can be kind of confusing on different websites. Uh, you don't always know what you're signing, which is an entirely different issue. Um, so, yeah, we kind of have this meta learning as well. Uh, and uh, we also sign you up for Gitcoin Passport um, or you sign yourself up for Gitcoin Passport uh, via walkthrough in the uh, at the end of the first lesson, uh, which allows you to claim our badges. These are Sybil resistant. Um, and at the same time, you've now gained Gitcoin Passport to use in other areas of the uh, Web3 ecosystem. And we expect to see more and more of that in the coming months. So, yeah, that's a little bit about us and some of the... Um, the design philosophy behind the decisions that we made also. Yeah, super interesting to hear the details of that. I think a lot of thought went into this. Um, and I love the, yeah, the on-chain badges. Uh, also really like the point you made about, um, you know, prioritizing or trying to like have more um, visual material over written, uh, especially to appeal to different learning types, right? And I think uh, a lot of the information we need to consume here when onboarding to Web3 is just, yeah, in written format. Like, it's a lot to, it's quite dry, I don't know, to read it in written format. I find visuals to be really interesting. I love infographics for that reason. So, um, yeah, super cool. Um, Umberto, maybe you can talk a little bit about how your program differs from this or if you guys are doing things in a different way or if there's some major similarities there I'd be curious to hear um, yes so we have two branches of uh, educational model or materials and um, on the one hand we have the micro learning pills as I said before these are in text and in videos and on the other hand, uh, hand we have yeah. full yeah. courses okay. and these are our, these are our two educational branches uh, in both, we have immersion. This means that we offer apprentices direct calls to action to both test and apply their recently acquired knowledge into their lives. And we also use quizzes uh, and also challenges. The challenges are virtual and in real life ways of asking people to make a change um, in their life and for their communities. Um, we started very Web3 with... Uh, for example, using quest chains and 101, uh, XYZ. But uh, then the focus group told us that these were still complicated to many of the people we were reaching out, um, specifically for um, older people. So, and most of these people do not have Twitter, they have Facebook or they have WhatsApp. And these are things that we need to, to take in mind. And we put a lot of effort into making it uh, with Web3 tools and so on. But at the end, this was not helpful for the communities we, we are aiming for. Um, it will be something that will be uh, incorporated in the future. But I am also very interested in what Bangles is doing through the badges. We want to, to use that too. But at the moment, we want to make it as easy as possible for uh, people that do not have the, the Web3 basics or in general compute, uh, like computer knowledge, uh, because our approach is to give a different ontology first, a different perspective of life to people that are willing to make a change in their cities and then give them the tools. So it's like... Um, it's a three vertices or a three yeah, um, perspective uh, approach where we have the ontology on one hand and on the other hand we have the tools and this is something that we are uh, learning. But um, so now that we don't have the Web3 um, approach, I will post in the, oh, I, in, in the, the chat, let me see. Mm -hmm. so it looks like here. this when I enter the um, there I put it I don't, I don't know if you see yeah, it it says the, the thread do you know learning with the Urbanica threads gives you a unique certificate of knowledge book raffle tickets experience points and unlockable surprises maybe if you can help me pin it in the in the space uh, please this is what we are doing now this is a tally form uh, where the quest the, the quiz and we, we are using video ask for uh, the challenges. So any person does not, does not matter if they use Telegram, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, Twitter, they will receive the, the link 
and they can send back an audio, a video, or a text with uh, the proof that they made the challenge. And now it's very manual, but this is the way we are learning also from what people is, is engaging with. Um, but I, this, there are two things that I want to say about this. So the Twitter threads and the videos are for unregistered apprentices. So we are not able to track much of the impact that people engage with us on, unless they share it, right? However, we are opening the full course on March, and on that we have the registered yes. apprentices version. And in here, people um, cannot go through the course. There are 10 levels. So people cannot advance to the next level if they don't show the evidence that they have completed the level one. And the way of showing evidence is in through, a chat, through a chat where other peers, other students, are going to review that. So this is co-learning. This is a way of also decentralized uh, education so that uh, we peer review each other and you need to review another person so that you also get back. And this is also a way to um, take out some uh, workload on our hands so that we can focus on creating the content and not that much on on being after the people, let's say. Um, and we have uh, the gamified version, the gamified um, thing with the, with the levels. And we are giving some NFTs through emails or directly to the wallets for those people that already have one or when they create it. Because through the course, we ask people, we teach them about how to create the wallets. Um, but then also we have raffles. So for the Twitter threads, if you complete the challenges that we have there, you can participate for, um, for, to, to, uh, to win a, a book, one of the books that we are now teaching through the threads. But also as you level up, you will participate in different opportunities such as events with uh, small groups for uh, having conversations with um, top practi practitioners or researchers or other peers the, uh, into a very specialized topic that is that you need to, to discuss or to chat with to advance into your commons or into your community or your project. And this is what we are doing. Amazing. Um, yeah, that's, thank you for, for the level of detail there. It's, uh, it's so interesting. And also I love the accessibility that you're, you're focusing on because, um, yeah, not every, like even the simple thing, not everyone uses Twitter, right? So... Um, and we're, you know, we're catering here to, to people who are trying to enter the space. So there's a lot to consider there. Um, awesome. I, yeah, um, actually, I also wanted to flip modes a little bit to, um, uh, there was actually something that, that Almond um, from Giveth here had flagged to me um, that she had gotten through some content that was posted from Token Engineering Academy. Um, specifically, there was... Um, something mentioned around decentralized education. And I was curious, you know, um, Octopus, I've actually attended a token engineering um, session uh, in person in Berlin. So I know there's also, it's also quite interesting. Um, and it was a bit of a mix of physical, like education that's happening in real life and then also online education from my understanding. Um, but maybe flipping to this topic of decentralized education, could you maybe provide more uh, context on on how you would define that and how a token engineering academy defines that concept? Sure. Uh, so I have a strong background in traditional pedagogy of studying how people learn and what are the best practices specifically for mathematics, because that was my field. And I think the, the worst thing about traditional education is it can feel like everyone is on a bus and the professor is the driver and they're going to get you to the stops and that's what's going to happen. And if you want to get off the bus, there's not really a good way to do that. If you decide you want to live here and grow strawberries and not continue the trip, there's not really a way to do that. So I think that the, at the core of decentralization is... Um, a modularity to the approach. So students have the ability, it's not like you just get on the bus and you, you go in a linear manner necessarily, 
for instance, even on the tokenengineering.net token engineering fundamentals course, there are five independent modules. So you don't have to go through the calculus section if what you're more interested in is governance. You can start in module five on governance and then do the others when you feel like it or never, depending on your interests. And there are multiple study groups that are truly decentralized in the sense that if one study group suddenly stopped working, the remaining study groups would still be able to function. Um, even if the TE Academy itself went down, probably the, some of the study groups would still be able to keep doing what they're doing and engaging in this educational process. So decentralization is something that's very important to me personally. And I think that the design of the Token Engineering Academy is set up in such a way that you you find your place and you're able to engage with it in the way that feels right to you. You find, you know, I don't think Token Engineering Academy does a lot with gamification. I think the Token Engineering Academy approach is about finding the community, your learning community. And I think that's my uh, view of it. Can I say one more thing about that? So even in a traditional institution, if it's done well, you have multiple levels of vertical integration where people have different levels of knowledge and that's a benefit. So you don't just have professors and students. You have graduate students who are leading, um, you know, individualized sessions. You have tutors who are undergraduates. You have people who have different knowledge levels and they're all sort of interconnected. And I think TE Academy does that really well with the study groups because we really value study group hosts. Each study group hosts gets to, you know, structure their study group in the way that feels right to them with some information from us about best practices. But you, you do have people who are beginners and you have people who, are, who have been in the space for maybe a year and you have people who have been in the space for five years and you have people who are engineers for 50 years and all of them are able to contribute to a community and, and benefit each other from the fact that their perspectives are so diverse. So I think that's the, the value of decentralization in Token Engineering Academy specifically. Yeah, um, that, I love that answer. It's, uh, it's really interesting food for thought, actually. Uh, Tetronome, you had something you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I actually just wanted to um, really echo the importance of that. And like that's something that I think we've recognized, um, but haven't allocated uh, our full resources to. You know, we've been really working on the content and the, um, the gamification. But something we've said from quite early on is that uh, one person's learner is like another person's mentor. Um, so that kind of idea of looking at the, the different layers within the, um, w within the community that you have and kind of creating ways for them to, to interact with each other and like to benefit each other. Um, you know, people are naturally social creatures, right? We, we want to help each other. We want to talk and learn from each other. But as a protocol or, well, let's say as a project and maybe a protocol, um, knowing that your role is just to, like help them do that job better and like to provide additional tools uh, is a really good insight. So um Kudos to you guys for doing that over there. And I think there's a lot that Academy could learn from that. Um, yeah. And then just to throw in kind of what we do for that community involvement, like we, I agree that a decentralized education is very much about um, kind of, you know, if you were to go away, at least as a centralized entity, the community should still um, be able to, to kind of operate um, and, and function. But at the same time, like, while you are there, um, if you are a bit more centralized, like for us, we, we create our own content, but we have community involvement. So the community actually comes in during our, our beta phase for different lessons, and they leave um, feedback and, and reviews and ideas. Uh, and actually, earlier on in the process, for a lot of our lessons, we have um, our Level Up Live sessions. And that's where we kind of run these uh, small classes with a, a, an expert on the topic. Uh, so for our optimism lesson that's coming out next week, um, we joined forces with uh, Patrick McCory, who's an educator in the space on like L2s and, uh, and, and other topics. Uh, and he basically worked with us uh, to have these small class sessions where um, people, it's like a Q and A session. So he does like a 10 minute presentation 
And then the rest of the time is like, you know, a class of six students asking questions and evolving the conversation. And, and from that, we actually learn more about our learners and not only what they want to learn because of the questions they ask, but how they learn, which is how we resolve their questions and answer them. Um, and then in the future, uh, so we've actually just had our, our first writer's cohort. This is a, a separate um, mention. We've just had our first writer's cohort go through. And this is us kind of uh, investigating community submitted content in a very um, early stage. So in the future, we do have a vision where Bankless Academy would actually host content created by people. Um, and then those lessons could be translated in a decentralized way. And also uh, the content um, could be updated, which is a great way to uh, keep content evergreen um, or current. Uh, so decentralization isn't just a thing that we do because it's um, you know, a good right, or virtuous or something like that, though it is those things, um, but also because it's actually really practical. Uh, so if you can create a, a community that looks after itself, then I think that Web3 is going to be very powerful indeed. Yeah, totally. Um, it's I think that there's there's so much potential there. And it's I don't know, it's also not, um, you know, in, I don't know, coming from the like the regular corporate world, there's like this train the trainer concept and like. I don't know. I've seen like programs trying to work on this in, in some sense, but uh, yeah, it's um, I think like such an amazing thing to focus on in the Web3 space specifically and actually like taking it out a step further. Like what about collaborating cross community, right? Like with um, maybe with basically like various Web3 education uh, programs, for example, working together um, in some collaborative fashion to, to improve on the education sphere as a whole. Uh, do you have, do any of you have any examples of, of this happening or um, some good tips or strategies around uh, how we can further that? Well, we're doing it right now, I think, <laughs> in having these types of cross-collaborative discussions between these different groups. And also something that Token Engineering Academy does is in the past, it's partnered with organizations like Gitcoin. For instance, the design of the Gitcoin passport system partially came out of a Token Engineering Academy research group that I was part of. They've, they've partnered with people like Balancer and... Um, I won't remember all of the Token Engineering Academy partners, but the the connection with other educational institutions and with industrial partners who can provide real world problems for students to work on, and you know the type of real world expertise that you were talking about is it, it, the network. The internet is a network of networks, so an educational institution can't just survive on its own. It's going to need partnerships with other educational institutions and with the companies that are actually doing the work and the DAOs that are actually doing the work. For Urbanica, we haven't released the course, but within the modules, we talk about, uh, for example, Giveth and as a way to fundraise uh, or funding the commons. Also, we talk about Token Engineering Academy as ways to deepen the, the knowledge into applying the, the topics of peer governance and um, commoning and sustaining the commons, but through a token engineering design for building microeconomies with, uh, with more thought. Um, but, but these are examples. And what we were aiming by adding these examples is to let know the people that these are communities that are specialized on the topics and that they should go there to specialize, but uh, would be best if maybe uh, we could, um, like Urbanica, what I am talking about is uh, we can specialize on the topic of post-capitalism and instead of creating or recreating courses on DLTs or blockchains, we can do it with, uh, directly with, for example, bankless uh, in the topics of blockchain. And then once people have the basics of uh, DAOs and Web3, then uh, go to TEA -E 
uh, but in a more funnel or like a more flow uh, process that people feel they are um, taken by the hand in, in, the, in the sense of not left out, but that these are, as Octopus was saying, a network of networks and that we are value aligned, which is very important. We, we haven't uh, done this part because uh, many, um, many courses or many uh, videos of blockchain, they talk about a, without maybe thinking of it, they give their courses with a political perspective that we need to be careful of uh, because we don't want, specifically Urbanica, we don't want to, people to use technology to deepen the, the way we are living or to worsening it. Like um, I've seen some videos of people saying, you got to learn this or that, for example, AI or Web3, so that the future does not look bad to you and you live in prosperity. But what about the people that did not learn about it? What about the people that will be displaced by these technologies or by this new knowledge. And the idea is that we build things to free everyone and to achieve sovereignty and to live better, not to slave others. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, thank, thank you for, for adding in those points and, um, I think, you know, also in the, in the topic of, I mean, this network of networks is, is such a fascinating idea. I also really like the idea of like, yeah, then you can specialize in certain topics, right, that can then be shared across, don't necessarily need to all be reinventing the wheel on the same thing. Um, go ahead, Tetranum. Right. Um, yeah, so I think uh, one angle that perhaps wasn't mentioned is um, partnering with uh, with different kinds of tools that might not necessarily be specifically uh, about education, um, but still can make you know your service or product better. Uh, so I, I mentioned Gitcoin Passport earlier. Obviously, civil resistance is like a massive issue in the space. And um, our badge issuance was was pretty much hijacked by farmers um, until we and we had to shut it down until we actually partnered with um, with uh, Gitcoin uh, Passport uh, to kind of get that up and running and to uh, provide some some research and um, solutions to each other. So that's been really valuable. And um, it's really interesting when you get these different uh, primitives and atoms together and um, start uh, smashing them together and seeing what you come up with. Um, you know, all of a sudden now when we go to, uh, so we went to optimism to be like, Hey, like we want to build a lesson with you guys. Now it's actually a, um, a value proposition that our users that we are going to um, have interact with optimism or have learn about optimism are actually civil resistant. So um, when they have the badge for this lesson, uh, that badge is actually almost like a, uh, uh, a credential or what could you say um, like an accolade, like a citizen accolade that can now be used within the optimism ecosystem. So there's a lot of cool emergent um, things that could happen for your platform um, and make you, let's say uh, like a, a better fit in different places that you might not have been before. Um, and then also, you know, we partnered with kudos to get those badges up and running in the first place. Um, so uh, thanks to them. Uh, I've really struggled not to say uh, kudos to them. Um, yeah, for, for working with us to, to get those um, credentials up and running because that really helps us in our first step towards gamification. And then, of course, the Gitcoin Passport layers on top of that. So, um, yeah, I, I think that uh, cross-community collaboration can take a lot of different shapes and forms. And it's actually a really, really exciting uh, space um, from our perspective. Yeah, nice. I also wanted to add that, like, do you see cross collaboration as a potential strategy for funding for the Web3 education space? I'm just curious um, if you have any thoughts on, on, yeah, on how you're looking to get sustainable funding 
or if, if, if that's been discussed, like kind of, uh, you know, power in numbers in terms of, um, you know, doubt to doubt collaboration or maybe other other strategies around this. Yeah, if I could continue that thought from before, um, the, uh, the building this lesson with optimism now qualifies us for retroactive public goods funding. Uh, so we got nominated for their uh, second retroactive public goods funding round, which is uh, happening at the start of next month. Um, and so optimism has allocated a large, for anyone who doesn't know, has allocated a large portion of their initial token distribution, as well as uh, sequencer profits. So when you're paying a fee on optimism, a portion of that is actually going to public goods funding. Um, so yeah, like we at Bankless Academy, we really try to operate from this public goods standpoint um, by providing a free education, right? Kind of like a public school. And we have found an ecosystem to build with and to be part of that rewards and actually funds that. So if you, there's a lot of different ways to monetize an education platform and it really depends on your values and what's accessible to you. But if you're in a position where, um, you know, you want to do a more public good, a nonprofit approach, um, there are profitable entities out there that are looking for you. So it's about finding that symbiosis. And, and actually, uh, I know Giveth operates in a similar way, right, with the, the micro economies. Um, so there's, there's a lot out there. Uh, it just takes that mixing the primitives together to, um, to figure out how it can work and benefit both parts of the equation. But uh, interested to hear more from uh, some of the other people. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if anyone else has something to add. But I mean, another, I mean, kind of, it kind of leads also into this question that I wanted to ask about, like, what people maybe can expect after they've gone through these programs, after they've gotten, let's say, a, a full Web3 education, is it... Um, you know, I think the next step is likely that a lot of people may be looking for a job within the space or looking to join a community and contribute um, after completing a course. Um, do you have maybe, does anyone have, maybe have something to add on to like how do you have a way to transition students from the learning experience to uh, actually, you know, finding work to contribute to? Well, this is a challenge. This Web3 didn't face this challenge uniquely, you know, and one of the advantages that uh, a traditional education would have is you have an alumni network. And so if if the community builds an alumni network, then that, that sort of naturally builds on itself. So if you have someone who gets to know the learners and can see their skills and if there are opportunities to do things like you know, get hands-on practice, that's really helpful that you can show what you know and show who you are is really the key to connecting with uh, projects. And I mean, there are lots of projects that post their job opportunities in the TE Academy Discord. So that's something that is a way of connecting. Um, so I think that like any other job search or it's just about having your, your verifiable skills which in Web3 is going to be a mixture of traditional certificates and then things like NFTs and uh, videos and whatever you can point to that you've done. And then making that connection with people who value those skills. So did I, did I hear you say that that's like, it's something um, that's still a challenge in the Web3 space, like, like, trying to maybe get to the level of these existing alumni networks that we know from the traditional education system? Oh, I would say that it's a challenge just because of the time factor involved. You know, like if you look at a university and they've been churning out graduates for 50 years, then you have former graduates who are now like CEOs and senior managers. You have this deep time effect. And Web3 just hasn't had the opportunity to develop that yet. It has other advantages, but I think that that's a, a difference that's worth pointing to when it comes to the job market. I mean, to be honest, we know that a lot of these jobs are being filled by people who are going the traditional route, right? They came through an Ivy League school and got a finance degree, and they get plugged into 
DeFi and they just sort of translate their skills. So making it be a Web3 native pipeline, I think, is something that we continue to work on. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, uh, is there anything else that you think, like, particularly that we could be, that still needs to be strengthened in Web3 education? Or maybe if anyone else has something to add? Yeah, I mean, just to add to um, what Octopus was saying there, uh, or, well, really to, to offer maybe another avenue, um, the, the avenue he was kind of alluding to, uh, you know, if we talk more about this, um, you know, these different primitives that are in the space, right? You have an education public good, you have microeconomy, uh, microeconomies, public goods funding, I'll get coined as another one um, that does that. Um, you can also think about, uh, there's job boards out there, uh, right? So one, one thing for us is thinking about how can we have our credentials that we're handing out, these badges, work with um, these Web3 job boards. And I say Web3 job board, I think the only thing that's Web3 about them is probably wallet sign-in. Um, but obviously that shows that there's, there's a very fertile uh, field to, to be used and, and to be grown on there. So imagine someone was to collect a certain amount of credentials. Um, and I'd really like to see this happen in a, in a decentralized landscape where it's not just Bankless Academy credentials get you all the jobs. Um, that would be great for us. But uh, yeah, for the landscape in general, you want credentials that are kind of recognized from a lot of different platforms. And then on the job board, maybe that actually qualifies you for applying for certain jobs or whoever it is that is hiring is able to look at your credentials and kind of understand whether or not you're qualified. Yes, um, I will be deferring here. So what the approach of Urbanica is not for uh, teaching people to get a job or to participate in the market, in the job market. Uh, our approach is to teach these people uh, the three niches that we are aiming to. There are uh, policymakers, um, entrepreneurs, and activists, uh, urban activists more specifically. Um, the ways to change or the, the knowledge and the skills to change the reality. So these are not people that are looking for a job, but they, these are people that are actually uh, doing already something for their city and they just need to be updated on the technologies and the ontologies to do that. Um, so, for example, the policymakers that are currently looking for applying um, policies with blockchain that they know what, they, what are the implications of blockchains and which blockchains and what does smart contract means and, and so on. And not only the technological part, but what, how does, how can they uh, write a policy that is more um, inclusive, and not only for humans, but for the more than human world. And these are the ontologies that we teach. So it's a different perspective and are, there are different challenges. And, and well, there, there are different audiences in that regard also. Yeah, nice. I think that um, I think this wraps things up quite nicely. Um, unless you have any final words, I, I just want to say thank you um, for joining the space today. I've actually learned a lot through this conversation. A um, lot of lot of things to think about there. Um, love the network, uh, the network of networks topic specifically. My brain is going down some rabbit holes there. So thank you so much for for sharing and. Um, big fan of your initiatives. A um, couple last things I, I just wanted to add for anyone here. Uh, we are continuing our educational track in the, in the Giveth Discord uh, right after this closes. Uh, we have our weekly uh, AMA sessions. So you can, find, um, you can find the link to our Discord uh, on our Twitter account and, and join us there to, if you want to learn more about, about Giveth and um, how you can how you can donate via giveth to social impact projects, and and one thing also to add, I, I think everyone is aware of the the earthquake that hit Syria and Turkey last week, and in the name of collaboration, which we were talking about a lot today, uh, we've actually launched an initiative the last couple of days um, in partnership with Gitcoin, Inverter Network, and Supermodular, 
uh, where we're actually raising um, until we have the deadline of Monday, where we're looking to raise 25,000 um, across the DAO space uh, to hopefully from there kick off a quadratic funding round um, in partnership with Gitcoin to support all the NGOs that are providing humanitarian aid on the ground. So if you are able to contribute to that project, we're actively fundraising for it this week and um, would love your support. So that's also pinned to our profile. So um, yeah, just wanted to plug that because it's it's very dear to our hearts this week and we're working around the clock to to raise funds for that. So thank you all for joining today. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you in the AMA in a few minutes over in our Discord. And um, thanks so much, Tetronome and um, an octopus. <laughs> I love the names, by the way, in this space. They're probably my favorite. And Umberto for joining. And I hope you have, guys have a great day.